We're going to dive into Mel Kuyper's latest 2021 NFL Draft Big Board in just a second. Before we do that, though, do me a favor and like today's video. Here's the main reason behind that, folks. I got to make the decision on what to do to today here because I'm the only one in the office. There was nobody to tell me no. So if you don't want me to get in trouble, do me a favor and like today's video. Let's begin with number one, and this really should not be any type of surprise whatsoever. It's Trevor Lawrence leading the way at that number one spot. That really, again, should not be a surprise in any facet. That's rather expected. He's Trevor freaking Lawrence, right? All right, next up is Panay Sewell, another one that I like. He's a fantastic offensive line prospect. You're not going to get any complaints from me. And I think for a lot of people, having these two at number one and number two does make sense. All right, number three is Devonta Smith. And this one I could see having some potential disagreements on in the end in terms of difference of, of opinion. Smith checks in there at number three, and this is where things start to get, I think, very interesting. Jamar Chase checks in next up here at number four, the wide receiver from LSU. Smith over Chase, I think, is a very popular selection, but just keep that one in mind. And then another offensive playmaker, namely... Kyle Pitts, he checks in here at number five, and if you've noticed the trend, there is indeed a pretty good reason for that. Jalen Waddell checks in next here at number six. So think about that. Trevor Lawrence one, Panay Sewell two, and then Devonta Smith, Jamar Chase, Kyle Pitts, and Jalen Waddell. Four of the top six are all offensive playmakers. So what I want you guys to do now for me, simply put, is pick one. Who are you going to go with here? If you think Devonta Smith is the better prospect, type in DS. If you believe that it is Jamar Chase, well then type in JC. If you think it is Jalen Waddle, type in JW. If you think it's Kyle Pitts, type in KP. A lot of different routes you guys could go here. All of them have their strengths. Because they're all fantastic prospects. But I'm very curious how you guys vote. So because of that, I'm going to make this question the pinned comment on today's video. So if you get the ad break here on YouTube, scroll on down, get your votes in. DS, JC, JW, or KP. To number seven on Mel Kuyper's big board here, that is Justin Fields, the Ohio State product. And I have really no problems with this one whatsoever. Um, I think it makes a ton of sense, frankly. Uh, I think Justin Fields is a great prospect. A lot going on in terms of the quarterbacks. And that's why at number eight, it's Zach Wilson. There are a lot of people out there who truly believe that uh, Zach Wilson is a better prospect than uh, Justin Fields. I'm not fully there yet because I'm not done with Fields, but it is close. And again, all offense to the top eight until we get our first cornerback player, our first defensive player altogether. That, my friends, is Caleb Farley. And I know not everyone will agree with me on this, and that's totally understandable. I am a major major Caleb Farley fan. This is this is my guy this year. So he checks in at number nine. If you've watched our videos before, you know that I'm a big time Caleb Farley fan. If you do want more NFL draft coverage, make sure you guys are subscribed. That way you don't miss out on all the videos that we're going to put together for you guys. If you want to stay updated on what's going on around the world of college football, or, excuse me, of the NFL draft and college football too, and the NFL, of course, you know, all the major sports, we can keep you covered here. Hit that big red button and subscribe because no one will have a more fun and more viewed live NFL draft show than we will during the 2021 NFL draft. All right, number 10 on Mel Kuyper's big board, that is linebacker Micah Parsons. Now, in his article on ESPN+, Plus, Kuyper made a pretty big deal about the, the pass rushing value that Micah Parsons added. And that certainly is a factor there. It is telling, by the way, that at number 9, number 10, and frankly, number 11, opt-outs led the way. And what's really important to me with the way Kuyper did his board Rashawn Slater was listed as an offensive guard. Not a tackle, but as a guard. There's some disagreement within the community about, you know, what's the best fit for, for Slater. Is he a guard? Is he a tackle? I think he can play tackle, but he was a guard on Kuiper's big board. Maybe the first real surprise here, Mac Jones checks in at number 12, the Alabama quarterback, which means, yes, folks, he is ahead of the number 13 player, on Kuiper's big board. That is Trey Lance, and that one 
is pretty darn interesting. So let me know what you guys think. Who is the better prospect, Mac Jones or Trey Lance? I go Lance here. I think Lance's athletic upside, his arm strength, are better than Mac Jones. Now, I do think you can make a very real argument that Mac Jones right now is a better player than, than Trey Lance, but I kind of want to bet on the upside. Lance does terrify me, don't get me wrong, but I know he can have success outside of structure, outside of the pocket, and with not great talent around him, relatively speaking, right? Now, it helps that North Dakota State is kind of the Alabama as the FCS, but I do think that matters. So in the end, I went with, 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 with Trey Lance over Mac Jones. But get your votes in here. Do you think Jones is better? Y for yes or N for no. Let's go back now to Kuiper's big board. Number 14, Jeremiah Wusu koromoa I like this pick a lot. And as I've often said, hide the takes in the video instead of tweeting it. I honestly would take Jeremiah Wusu koromoa over Micah Parsons. The strengths and weaknesses are different. I do trust Parsons more as a run stopper in, in, with run fits, but I don't love him in coverage necessarily. There are character concerns around Micah Parsons from his time at Penn State. And I think Owusu Koromora's coverage ability is fantastic. And if I, have, if I want to go for a player who has a deficiency in one area, it's not the coverage area, not in today's NFL. That's why I went with uh, Koromoa over Parsons. But Kuiper disagrees, and of course, I'm sure many of you guys do down in the comments. Number 15, then, it is cornerback Patrick Sertan out of Alabama. I like that Kuiper actually went with uh, Farley over Sertan, but I know that's not how everyone feels. Farley did not play this year. Yeah, he has the athletic traits, but Sertan is just a, such a fantastic technician. So get your votes in. Pick a cornerback for me. Type CF for you would rather have Caleb Farley, or type in PS for Patrick Sertan. Again, I don't really think there's that much of, of a of a difference between these two prospects they're both truly fantastic options and there's really no wrong answer but I'm not a coward I'm gonna go with Caleb Farley let me know what you guys think down in the comments section number 16 on Kuiper's big board Elijah Vera Tucker the offensive lineman from USC had a true breakout year this past season for the USC Trojans I was very impressed by him I like where he's at on Kuiper's board number 17 and our first true edge rusher off the board here is Jalen Phillips. And this one might come as a surprise to at least some of you, but I do understand it. I, I do get where Kuiper's coming from here with this particular decision, and frankly, I get it. Now, there are some red flags around, um, around Jalen Phillips, namely the, the medical side of it. If he doesn't check out medically, and he might not, given that UCLA suggested he medically retire, that's a pretty significant red flag in the end. But I, if healthy, I do think 17 is a fair grade for him. Now, it is Valentine's Day. And if you're watching this after Valentine's Day, or of course on it like it is today, I hope you guys didn't forget. So let me help you guys. If you forgot, get out of the doghouse. And just, you know what, pro tip, just say, oh, honey, I, I ordered you these, these, these candies and chocolates and flowers, but it, it just got delayed because COVID. She's not going to know anything, but at least then you have something on the way and you don't look like as bad of a husband, boyfriend, or whatever. Head over to chatsports.com slash flowers. That link, which I'll put in the comments and in the description to help you guys out, will save you 15% off flowers, gifts, and everything. That's chatsports.com slash flowers. If you forgot, change it as soon as humanly possible. That way you get out of the doghouse worse than you, or avoid getting the doghouse worse than you already are. All right, back to Kuiper's big board here. Virginia Tech offensive lineman Christian Darasaw. I don't really have many complaints here. I think he's a great offensive line prospect. Frankly, I think you can make an argument for he should even be a little bit higher on this board, maybe even over Elijah Vera Tucker. All right, Gregory Russo, the teammate of one Jalen Phillips, although he didn't get to play with him this year because Russo opted out. He checks in here at number 19. I have some concerns about him, namely how his success translates to the NFL level, but I get that a lot of the NFL is high on him. And then, oh, look, another edge rusher, Quiddy Pay, out of Michigan, checks in here at number 20 on the board. Look, it's not a huge surprise that there are so many pass rushers here in this section. I think there's there's a pretty steep like grouping between that Late teens, even into the early 35s. You can throw in Aziz Ojolari here, other players. 
there's a big muddled mess as far as I'm concerned. So what do you guys think? I always like to see what you guys have to say when it comes to these types of things. Who do you believe is the best pass rusher this year? Get your votes in for me down in the comments section. Is it Quiddy Pay? Gregory Russo, Phillips, Aziz Jalaria, Joseph Asai, somebody else altogether. Let me know what you guys think. Number 21 on this board, that is J.C. Horn, the cornerback out of South Carolina. I like him. I, I would maybe have him a little bit higher. I think there's a lot of upside there. He's behind Farley and Sertain, but I do think he's a top 25 player. The lone running back on Kuiper's board, Najee Harris out of Alabama. He checks in at number 22. And then an interesting prospect, one that I'm fascinated by, Zaven Collins from Tulsa. Now, Kuiper again hyped him up as an edge rusher. And I got to be honest, I disagree. I don't think you can make Zaven Collins a full-time edge. Can you have him blitz off the edge at times? Absolutely. I don't think bulking him up, making him a full-time edge makes a ton of sense. I think he is a versatile edge rusher slash off-ball linebacker, a team that knows how to utilize a player in that mold, like the Patriots or Dolphins, for example, make perfect sense. But a full-time even 4-3 or 3-4 edge, I'm not sure that's it. Number 24, then, Kadarius Toney, the wide receiver from Florida. Interesting prospect. Again, there have been some previous off-the-field concerns around him. But you know what? He played really well for Florida this year. He looked absolutely awesome. Now, Kuiper only did 25 players. So before we get to number 25, let me know what you guys think. Who is Mel Kuiper hating on with his new big board? Let me know in the comments. Who does he have to? Who did he leave out altogether? Let me know what you guys think. Finally, a fascinating name here at number 25. That is Kelvin Joseph, the cornerback from USC. Now, part of why this is so fascinating is that he hasn't gotten a lot of hype. And Dane Brugler, who's, I think, the best draft guy out there, loves him as a player, but makes note that the character is rough, and that's a major concern. So, obviously, I think we got to do more digging on the character stuff to know exactly what's going on there. But if that's the case, and the talent is really good, that is certainly a fascinating option. But Joseph at 25, the talent's there. I think in the end, kind of like how Jalen Phillips comes down to medical, the character stuff is going to be critical for Joseph as we move forward to the 2021 NFL Draft. 